Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Blockchain Central. We're starting a new format on the channel, and we will be summarizing key events of the previous months, with special focus on enterprise and B2B-oriented side of the blockchain industry. In today's episode, we'll look into the adoption of Ripple's XRP into the Japanese financial system, analyze blockchain compliance moves in Germany, and also break down the most recent news on Facebook and their cryptocurrency. But before we dive deep into those big topics, let's look into the news of ETF and ETP approvals in Europe. Switzerland is again setting a precedent for other countries in terms of crypto adoption. Swiss stock exchange Six Group has started trading their Ethereum-based ETP, backed by a Swiss company Amun AG, marking a third ETP available for trading on the exchange. The other two are also managed by the same company and include a Bitcoin-based product and basket product with several cryptocurrencies. ETPs, or exchange-traded products, are derivatively priced securities. Their value is based on a commodity or currency. The obvious upside of an ETP is that it can be traded just like a share. While the SEC in the United States thinks about approving a Bitcoin ETF, the European markets are clearly spearheading crypto adoption. That's of course great news for the community and the entire industry. More big adoption news is coming from Japan where SBI Holdings, a long-term Ripple XRP partner, is aiming to make XRP tradable with Japanese yen. SBI Holdings, which began in 1999 as a soft bank investment, has been an active player on the crypto market. They were the first company to launch a bank-owned crypto exchange in Japan. The ambitious goal of Yoshitaka Katao, the president of SBI Holdings, is for every Japanese bank to be compatible with MoneyTap, a smartphone app based on Ripple technology. While Japanese banks seem to be betting on Ripple, IBM, one of the biggest employers on the planet, is going with Stellar. In order to avoid a convoluted network of intermediaries and transborder payments, IBM has launched their World Wire Service, a real-time payment platform based on stablecoins. The platform uses Stellar as their underlying blockchain technology and a USD-PEG stablecoin. In addition, six international banks are scheduled to also introduce their own stablecoin into the system, pending regulatory consent. The benefits of the World Wire service are apparent to anyone who has ever made an international payment. The immediacy and lack of intermediaries would mean faster transactions and the lack of uncertainty regarding fees and currency exchange rates. The Stellar protocol was chosen primarily due to its capacity for scaling. Germany is yet another country that doesn't want to be left behind and is getting ready to make big compliance moves. A recent recommendation by the German Federal Ministry for Finance is aimed to allow the country to properly recognize and regulate tokenized securities as financial instruments. It all started with a report published by the German Ministry of Finance on electronic security. The report suggested developing a single centrally supervised registry of digital financial instruments. A draft is said to be closely following the report. The bill is being designed to be flexible in adjusting to the quickly changing blockchain landscape, even though it would not be limited to the blockchain-based security. The report also confirmed that, under German law, utility tokens are not to be considered securities. This means that such tokens will most likely be exempt from the requirements placed on securities issued. All this might mean that soon there will be an STO-oriented legislation in place in Germany. With all the positive news about the crypto space, we should also mention something that can be considered a slight setback for the community. Citibank decided to withdraw from launching their own bank-backed cryptocurrency. The token was to be primarily used for international payments. Even though the project was never formally announced by the bank, rumors of the so-called Citicoin were circulating all over the financial space for some time now. According to Guru Atak, the head of innovation for Treasury and Trade Solutions, the company decided to make meaningful improvements in the existing payment ecosystems, including SWIFT. The rationale behind focusing on SWIFT is the established network of operators and the time and effort it took to onboard them. Citibank has no plans of abandoning blockchain entirely though. In their opinion, the area that yields the most promise for DLT is trade finance. And finally, there might be a big crypto announcement from Facebook. We've been hearing rumors about the social media giant getting into blockchain for years now, but this time we're hoping it will really happen. According to reports, a new cryptocurrency that would enable Facebook users to conveniently exchange money is in the works. The focus is said to be primarily on WhatsApp, but considering that the former head of Messenger, David Marcus, 
was allegedly reassigned to the blockchain project last year, Messenger support could also be on the agenda. The payment system will probably be based on a stablecoin and could potentially launch in the first half of 2019. That's it for our recap of March 2019. Let us know in the comments if there's anything we left out and also if we should include anything in our next month's recap. Before you go, please note that this content does neither represent financial, legal, or tax advice, nor is it supposed to be understood or interpreted as solicitation to buy or sell any securities, coins, or tokens. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Blockchain Central to never miss a beat. See you in the next one.